Hello everyone, um, welcome back to my channel. Um, so I got a comment on one of my YouTube shorts asking if I could do a tutorial on how I draw anime. Um, that is primarily what I draw. Um, if you're watchers of my previous videos, or even if you're new, um, I do draw anime. Um, Sometimes I do it in kind of more of a chibi form, and sometimes I do the, you know. Um, and on occasion I'll do my own kind of thing. So it just kind of depends, but I primarily do anime. Um, I take a lot of inspiration from anime. So, I don't know, it's just really fun. Um, so today I'm going to be showing you how I draw. So, um, hopefully you guys learned something from this. Um, so. Let's get into it. Um, so first I just make a canvas. Um, I don't under, I should probably learn this a little bit more, but um, I am on Procreate and, but when I do canvas sizing, I just do my screen size. I just pick a default one. Um, so I guess first things first is um, brushes I use. So I made a folder called brushes. Um, they're called faves. They're just brushes that I use quite often. Um, so usually, and all of mo almost all of these are just the standard brushes. I didn't really edit them all that much, but I can make a separate video on if there's like if you want to know more about my brushes and pens and stuff. Um, I maybe I'll make a video on how I edit those. There's not really much to it. I just kind of make it to your preference on like the studio pen is just the same pen. I just made the taper a little bit different and I might have done the streamline a little bit different. I'm not really sure. It's been a while. Um, so these are the brushes I use. Um, almost always I use the 6B pencil, the studio pen, in the round brush. Those are my basic pens. The other ones are for a little bit more detailed stuff. So the flat brush I usually use for hair. Soft air brushing I usually use for blush. Um, and then I use this actually. I don't use it as a brush. I use it as a blending tool. So yeah, but you will see how I, on occasion, I will use um, this one. I'm not going to try to pronounce it, but um, sometimes I will use this pencil for line art instead of the studio pen. It just depends if I want more of a soft and sketchy look rather than a very, I, instead of having a cleaner line art layer. Anyway, so. The first things first is I usually just start out sketching. Um, at the moment, I really didn't plan this through. Um, I recently just got the comment, like, <laughs> um, I don't even think it's been an hour yet. Um, and I just decided, you know what, I have time. I don't know when I'll have this time again, so I might as well start recording now. I could post it in a week, so. Yeah. Um, so if I'm drawing a person, I always, um, that is the wrong pencil, uh, just a rough circle, that's, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, it kind of, this kind of seems like the typical way artists usually start out with their heads, but I mean, it's a really good way to start, so. Um, and I just kind of point the chin in and make a head, and I will... If I don't like things, then I'll change them. It's just basically to preference. Um, typically, I will make, let's see if I have an example of it. Um, I'll typically make girls with a little bit more of a rounder face. Um, whereas men, I'll have kind of a more defined, a bit, little bit of a longer 
proportion. Girls I usually have bigger eyes, guys I have smaller. So yeah, um, the guys I usually add, the, like the nose bridge line, that kind of stuff, I, I don't usually do that for girls as like um, this piece. On occasion I will use that highlight right on the nose bridge, but on girls, but not always. Um, I like to keep my artwork as simple as possible because I am a lazy artist. So, um, just keep that in mind. I try to make my process as simple as possible. Um, um, in previous videos, I do try to make things a little bit more complicated and more detailed, but not always. I just figured out this the other day. Look, ready? Okay. You select it. And then you go to here. Copy. Oh, wait. Did that not? Okay. I did something wrong. Here. Copy. Paste. Look at that. I have an ear now. So now I can just flip it and I have the matching ear. Okay, I know this is like, it's not rocket science to figure this out, but I didn't know it. So this is a little hack if you are lazy like I am. Um, so with my head, um, so depending on my mood, sometimes I'll have, um, I'll grab a different color a little bit more of a defined line so you can see I go straight line and then I kind of angle it so you get this nice little corner right there um or sometimes I really just round it it kind of depends on the character you're making if you want more of a stronger harsher character I recommend definitely doing the more dramatic jawline kind of thing but if you have like a really soft sweet character then smooth less harsh lines are probably going to be the best um so anyway neck is just men i ha usually do thicker necks girls i don't um so it kind of just depends. Um, I don't know if we're going to make this. Just kidding. Anyway. So you just add the neck. It's just a lines. And it's kind of the ba basic template. Um, the inside of the ears, usually I add this thingy. And then I go like that and just fill in this little corner. That's what I usually do. So right here, fill it in with black. So then you get a little bit more of a, I know I don't know any anatomy. I am, I don't understand any of it, honestly. I get a little bit here and there, but I'm not an anatomy major. I'm not an anatomy major, and I doubt any of you guys are. So, being able to understand it as an understanding it enough as an artist is good. But none of us are majors. I mean, maybe you are, but um, so just being able to make it look like the human features without it having to be exact will definitely just get the point across that hey, I add these little lines in the ear. It's an ear. I mean, I'm pretty sure people would be able to figure it out. I mean, look, if you look at my PNG tuber model on here, I don't even have this fancy of an ear. I just have a little line. But people get the point across that that's the inside of my ear. Okay, um, moving on. Now, just for reference purposes, um, I am going to enlarge this. Um... So you have your guidelines. Do I listen to those? <laughs> nope. And for my eraser, I just have a round brush. It's simple. And yeah. Now sometimes I'll add these little neck thingies. Okay. 
For nose, easiest thing in the world. You don't have to do any circles and connecty doodles. It is legit a line. It is a line. Um, but what I do make sure is I have learned this from taking um, kind of a, a sort of an eye class. Um, the nose is roughly, where was it? It's like not at the bottom of my ear, but it is somewhere in there. So it's kind of in this area right here. So you don't want your nose up here, but you also don't want it down here. Just to kind of give it a little bit more human proportions, but you can stylize it if you want. Um, let's see, we're going to make it a girl just because it's my go-to. Um, and same thing with mouth. Simplest thing you can do is lines. What is great is that with anime mouths, you can get a whole lot of expressions out of them with pretty simple, like, in my chibi styles, I do that for kind of more of a pouty frown. I legit sometimes do that for a smile, like, um, but usually for anime drawings, split the mouth into two pieces. So you got the one line. I don't know why it's not drawing. Um, have it kind of a softer. The smaller. There. There we go. Anyway. Just having it look nice and soft is kind of just nice. But I mean, you, there's a whole lot of references you can find online for mouths. Um, mouths are my weakness, so, and on occasion, um, that's when we get to the coloring process, but, um, I will, on occasion, for female characters, depending on how old they are, I will add a little bit of pink coloring there for lipstick, but that's very rare occasions I usually do that, but I mean, maybe I'll start. If I were to do a male character, usually I would add this little nose bridge, and I sometimes will add the little line there. It just depends on how I feel in that moment. And it also depends on your art style. So for female characters, I keep it small. Give them a cute little button nose shape. Um, if you want, you can add a little highlight there later. It depends on where your lighting sources are. Um, I'll probably make this a, a series on how I draw anime. So um, this will just be the sketching portion of it. Um, for eyes, um, I actually watched a YouTube video on this and I took a lot heavy inspiration from that, but then I also forgot half of it, so it doesn't look anything like how I used to draw them. So, um, it just kind of depends on the shape you want. So if I wanted to do something like this shape, I would usually do this. And this is the top lash line, and so since I usually, I typically don't draw lashes. Um, sometimes I will, if I'm feeling really extra in the moment, um, I will, but usually I don't. So you want that lash line to be a lot bigger than you want the rest. And then I will add a little bit. You don't fully extend it. And you can add just a little tiny lash if you want. Sometimes I will add the lower lash line and a couple lashes. Sometimes I won't. It's it's hard to do a tutorial. I've I've never had to do one. Like I've never done an in-depth tutorial before, I guess. I've done a sort of tutorial video in the past. Um I will put that video up at the end. Um but it wasn't as detailed, so if you want, you can add a couple lashes. Just make sure it's like thicker at the bottom. But I don't want lashes, so. Now you can either drop the eye like this, 
or you can extend that up however you want usually i'll make this a little bit more lashy at the end so it gives off the idea that she has lashes but sometimes i won't um and then you just go ahead and draw your eye in and there we have an eye um you can press edit shape after you I usually, when I make my circles, I won't just draw it because I like, it messes me. I like it to be a nice clean shape. And so if you hold it down, there should be an option that pops up at the top that says edit shape. You can edit it to how you want. Um, so typically I do have the top touching. And there we go, we have an eyeball. And then I will usually select, copy, paste it. Sometimes I won't, but um, so it just kind of depends on, I'm actually gonna make these a bit bigger. Um, so it's actually probably a bad habit of, well, yeah, it's probably a bad habit of copying and pasting all the time because it teaches you to not be able to draw both of them, but you know, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> so I'm trying to select say so select if it'll let me and I am just going to make it a little bit bigger perfect I'm actually going to erase the lash lines a little too thick just a little bit cool so now we have our eyeballs in I kind of have the eyes near the topper the upper portion so that the eyes eyebrows can be in that region too and it depends on how you want to do this but I, I literally eyebrows are the easiest thing. They're just a straight up line. So you can do different expressions with them. Um, like if you do one down, one up, you got like a raised eyebrow, like judging look. You can do angry, surprised, but typically a straight line gets the job done. If you want thicker eyebrows you can add a little thing you can go as thick or as thin as you want but that's just usually it, the line works fine um let me think usually i will put these little lines right here um just how i usually do it just to signify there's supposed to be blush there um sometimes i won't so also depends on you. So for hair, um, I'm not an extremely detailed person, so I just like to get the shape across. So if I was drawing a person with curtain bangs, like as a person with curtain bangs, this is how I draw them. Um, just to get the point across that they're not quite bangs, but they're not like, not your hair tucked behind. I'll add these little wings off to the side and then we have curtain bangs um or if you have straight across bangs i will usually just make a line across and then just kind of get the general shape you can erase the bottom line i don't usually draw straight across bangs very often i need to learn how to draw those because um i think they're really cute um but i can't draw them very well so, um, or usually I'll just like, 
A lot of people, I need to work on this, but they'll make a hairline so they know if I'm making strands, this is where the hair, the gap needs to stop. So there's this little gap right here. The end of it needs to stop right at the hairline or it'll look really weird and you'll have a whole lot of forehead. So that's how you should probably do it. But you know what? Forget it. I don't do it. So this is a tutorial. I should go back. A tutor tutorial on how I do it. So this is how I do it. I just go for it. Honestly, just keep in mind that I should probably not have a hair strand all the way up here because that doesn't look quite right. They should all start at a similar point. So if I wanted to have her hair go like that and then sometimes I'll add little strands on the side. Really all just depends. Sometimes, a lot of times I'll erase the top part because it's a little distracting for me. Um, I'll usually add this little V shape wherever your part is. So if I had a part that was all the way over here on the girl, I would probably add it over here. But I have kind of a middle part going on, so I'll do it in the middle. And then you just do the rest of the hair. And there you go, you have the top of your head. Now the back of the hair, very simple to do. You just connect it. Um, if you want short hair, I kind of do these little square things and add a couple triangles. Obviously not as many as I just did. And then just add a couple lines to kind of signify there is hair there. Or if you're doing long hair, just keep going down. Um, kind of just depends if you want it in front of your person just put it in front so just kind of however you want to do it but um just for the sake of this i'm just going to do some super simple straight hair so we have our head so and then you just draw your clothes in you could do high neck usually with my style i stick to kind of more simpler styles i wish i am gonna learn how to do this okay maybe it'll be a future video learning how to do like more character designy like have you seen those like anime costumes like they are so extravagant and detailed and you're like wow this is just so cool i can't think of things like that but also, I just need to figure out how to draw them or just get inspiration. So for the sake of this video, we are going to do a t-shirt. <laughs> um, you can add little wrinkles. Later on, when I get to the coloring process, um, I will have a different sketch that I will teach you how to color on. So you guys can kind of get a little bit idea. I can show you how to color clothes and yeah so anyway this is my sketching process um sometimes it is very important let me tell you if you have a reference having a reference is just so helpful when drawing i know it, it's a huge thing honestly i've been noticing a lot more with artists they bring up the fact and they everyone's accepting the fact that references are important so You've probably heard this before, but if someone tells you that references are cheating, you can fight them, okay? <laughs> um, references are so important. You look at, if you don't, then it's going to look a little wonky or just not quite what you're trying to capture in your brain. So use references. I use references a lot. If not, then um, they'll look a little weird. So very very important to use references um so yeah i love you guys um and i will be making a playlist for my 
new little mini series on how to draw. Um, so check out this video. Um, I did a very quick version of how I draw. So anyway, um, I love you guys and I will see you later. Bye. Did it not turn off? Oh crap.